This video instruction is for how to configure SharpCap or check the configurations for use on the Lucy Occultation projects. To continue, make sure that your camera is set up, cabled up, powered on. Now to start up SharpCap. Double click the icon on the screen. The cover screen comes up. You can't see this, but it asks if you want to allow the app to make changes to your device, and you click Yes. This gives it the permissions needed to modify the system clock. Then you get the splash screen, which shows you the version number down here, if you want to know which one you're running. And then when SharpCap starts up, it automatically will connect to the camera if you have the camera up and running. For this exercise, you really need to have the camera connected in order to see the configurations for taking data. You'll notice that we see the GPS status. That's because it's been turned on automatically for you by the startup script. I won't talk about that for the moment. That'll be subject for another video. Now we're going to go through the configurations. And this is all about configuring the software for use with this camera. So under File, SharpCap Settings, you get this dialog. And we're going to work through these tabs one by one. General is where to start. And we don't really need tips when SharpCap starts. Automatically connect a camera when SharpCap starts. That means that if it's connected, you'll bring it up and it will start a taking data immediately. Automatically restore camera settings means that any changes that you've made in the configurations will come there. That's good to check. Display, you can turn this on or off. That's a personal preference. If I turn that on and say apply, you see that it moves to a slightly darker display. This hasn't been field tested yet. You may or may not like this use whichever you're most more comfortable with. But I'm going to switch back to the other mode for now. We want to check Save Capture Settings file alongside each capture. This records what you did in the controls that are over here to the right. And we do not want to use the automatic output format. So we leave that turned off. This one, we could turn this on, but we've already started taking data and working with it without this particular option, so we're going to leave this unchecked. What this means is that the data that we collect is actually 12-bit data, and it's been shifted 4 bits to the right to make it look like it's 16-bit data, but it really is only 12. This flag doesn't really matter because we're never going to save TIFF files, but We'll leave that checked because that's a default of the program. The next piece, that's confusing. It says the preferred video format is SCR. If you'll notice, if I click on this, it gives you a choice of SCR and AVI. We don't want or care about either one of those, and other options will dictate what is saved for what we call, what might call video. The preferred still format is FITS. We want to always save our data as FITS files. And the target names, we don't really care about that. Right now, we don't need extra information in the log for troubleshooting. Um, I don't expect that will happen for any of our occultation events. And finally on the screen, log all QHY GPS data to the file. You select this. What this means is there will be a file that is saved on the computer for every imaging sequence you take that is recording the latitude, longitude information and camera status as you're taking data so that we can process that separately from the images. The next tab, hardware, is not particularly interesting since we don't have any hardware connected that's relevant to this program. So move on to the file names tab. There's a lot of stuff here. So the default for where to save captured files to is shown here under Users, MU69, that's the name of the account, on Desktop, SharpCap, Captures. 
that's the folder that you see on your desktop. Don't change this. This is where we expect to see the data on all of the laptops. So you want to have these boxes checked, organized, <coughs> organized captured files into subfolders, first by date, then by target name. But target name will be irrelevant because of later settings. We're going to use UTC times and file and folder names and a sortable date format. And we will not create these compatible file names. For the sequences, we don't include time and file names, and we create a subfolder for each sequence. Append the filter name is not relevant since we don't have a filter wheel, so leave that unchecked. And shown here are examples of what the file names will look like if you take a single file or if you take a sequence. Don't worry about the suffix on these files. That's handled by other things. But the rest of the paths that you see here are important. You'll see under SharpCap Captures, there'll be a date. And that will be the UT date that you take the data. And then there's another folder for a sequence, which will be the time that the sequence started. This is the time that you would record on your log sheets, for instance. And then the sequence of images is saved just saying frame underscore and then a five digit number that counts up from one. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting and you may have to edit your configuration to get it into this state. This, the selections above are probably going to be the same on a, even a fresh install of SharpCap. So we're going to edit the file name templates manually. You select that and I think that grays out a lot of stuff up top. For a single file you'll see that we have date colon SZ backslash time. Now we don't really use that too much but that's what that should look like. Sequence will be date, time, and the frame index. And so that's why you see this pattern up here in the sequence name. Sometimes you will see the letter Z after the curly brace on time, and that would just put a Z at the end for Zulu. And we don't want that. Um, I just I want it to look, this pattern should look as you see it here with just a plain date, and a plain time with underscores in the time and hyphens in the date. Live stack, just follow the same patterns. If you see the, um, the Z in there, um, you might find it. These aren't quite so important because they're not relevant for occultation data, but just to get it all kind of looking the same. So just Take a look. You can even pause the video and look at these screens and compare it against what you see on your instance of SharpCap. The last four tabs are not particularly interesting, but I'll run through them so that you can see what's generally there. Memory, we use classic mode. And uh, plate solving. We don't really use this, but here the you detect automatically, but there's nothing. We don't have that software. Star detection noise threshold is 50 sigma. And downsample large images when solving. And this, the other actions for sync and mount for telescope doesn't matter since we're not talking to the telescope. Same for the polar alignment. This doesn't matter since our telescopes don't need this. And startup scripts should be empty. That completes the settings under File. And next, we'll talk about capture profiles. Capture profiles make life much, much easier at 
the telescope while observing. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner here it says capture profiles and then if you click there's a drop down and there's various other options. Most systems will only have AUK or something called fast AUK. So how would you look at one of these? You have to load the profile to see it. You can't edit it any other way. It basically records all the settings in these general tool manipulators on the right hand side. But there's one interesting thing to look at here. If you click Manage, pops up a window, and then you see the name of our camera, QHY174M. You open that up. Here's the AUK profile, and notice that it says Default. That's what your system should look like. This is the script that loads when SharpCap starts and it sees the QHY camera connected. But since it's already loaded, we can see what's in it. At any time you want, you can press load and you'll get back to that profile. So if you change any of these other settings, you're just making adjustments and trying experiments. And if you want to get back to this, you just have to go back up and click load at any time. Now let's go through and see what's in this profile. So under capture format and area, we are using Mono 16. There's Mono 8 and Mono 16, and this is what we want to use. Capture area, 1920 by 1200, happens to be the full size of the array. If you look here, there's lots of different other options, but we're going to use the full. Binning, we always use one by one. Two by two is also an option. And then output format. And this one is very, very important. You want it to say fits. And you do not want to click this button that says auto. If you do that, it's going to make the files be a .ser file. You see here, these are all the options. This program really, really wants to use SER. And we have to be very careful to make sure that it always says fits. Camera controls. Here's where you've got the exposure time. And the default for the setting for this profile is half a second. This is really good for getting set up on the field. It may not be the speed you're going to run at an occultation, but this is always a good reference to go back to. Gain should always be set to 300 unless otherwise instructed, but this is our baseline setting for this type of observation. Frame rate maximum, amp noise reduction on, offset of 100, USB traffic 50, enable live broadcast off, force still mode off. Everything other than gain is pretty much how the program would normally set itself, except with the possible, um, except for offset, which could be zero in defaults, but we want it to be 100. Next, GPS controls. This button toggles that screen that starts up when you start the program. You can click that button to bring it up or click the X to make it go away and it shows you details about what's going on with the GPS. Notice that it says here status locked. Down here on the bottom of the screen it says status locked as well. So you don't have to have this window open unless you want to read off the latitude and longitude or see the time. And also this button here, set PC time to GPS time, will reset the system clock. If I click that now, you'll see that this now goes to zero and it changed the system time. Um, you should only do this maybe once at the beginning of the night and don't keep clicking it throughout the night. And then GPS is turned on in this. The default, if you didn't have the capture profile, would be off but we always want it to start. GPS calibration LED, we definitely want that to be off. And these two, I've never figured out what they're exactly for, but we just leave them alone at zero and a thousand. Image controls, don't change the image controls. 
it should show 1 for gamma, 0 for brightness, 0 for contrast, time stamp frames off. Don't change those, ever. Thermal controls, we want to be on auto for cooler power, and the target temperature will be set to 0. If you're running at zero, you're just not going to have any problem with hot pixels or dark current. And if it's colder than that, the cooler won't run and the chip will run colder, but the data will still be just fine. You definitely don't want to run this, this turned off because this will quickly rise up to 27 to 30 degrees C for the actual temperature of the detector, and that's too warm for us. Pre-processing, all of this stuff is turned off, suppressed. We don't use it. No subtract dark, no apply flat, no banding suppression, or any of that kind of stuff. And then finally, the display histogram stretch is not saved in the configuration. This is a real-time control. The most useful part of this is to click that button for auto stretch when you get onto a new star field. If you want to make a change, for instance, the most common thing is to change the exposure time and say you go to a longer exposure. You can click left or right of this box to change by a factor of two or you can drag the slider around. If you've changed that and you're done and you want to go back to the standard you just say click on load and it goes back to 500 milliseconds. So that's a safe way to experiment around always knowing you can get back to this. If the parameters for your occultation are such that they're not the same as the OCK profile, the easiest thing to do is to load the OCK profile, change the exposure time. Let's say we want to do 200 millisecond exposures. Then you, I've made this change, and now we do a save as, and we could call this fast awk for instance and now fast awk is the profile now we could go back to awk load it and see the exposure time goes to 500 milliseconds if we now go to fast awk load it goes to 200 milliseconds and all the other settings that we had for awk are saved and carried along when we save the fast awk profile and then if we decide, no, no, not 200, but 250 milliseconds is really what we want, and you have fast stock, you can just do a save now, and that will update the fast stock profile. When you restart the program again, it will always come back up and start in the awk profile. And so that's it for the profiles. And now you've got all the information you need to know to configure SharpCap.